Um, all right, I'll jump right in. Uh, I don't want to keep anybody from coffee, uh, including me. So um, there are various psychosocial challenges linked to material poverty. I'll focus on those that are related to my area of expertise, which is pro-social preferences and behavior. Uh, challenges of poverty, of course, include suffering that results when needs aren't met, the psychosocial distress that suffering causes, and the anxiety that unpredictability causes which in turn constrain what Shafir calls mental bandwidth, which can lead to decision-making patterns that can exacerbate existing problems. And not surprisingly, poverty is associated with relatively low levels of subjective well-being. Um, one of the strategies that communities with more poverty typically adopt to mitigate these challenges are collectivist values, which are a social adaptation to environments that are threatening or unpredictable or resource poor. And collectivism refers to cultures where the fundamental unit of society is the group. And collectivist cultures reinforce values like loyalty to the group, obedience to authority, and maintenance of religious laws and norms that promote tight social bonds and high group order and cohesion, which are essential to survival in threatening and resource poor environments. Um, and these social relations tend to be achieved by high levels of informal internal monitoring and sanctioning those who violate group norms. Uh, at one point, it was thought that collectivist society's prioritization of collective over individual goals results from values that emphasize cooperation and trust in general. But more recently, the consensus is it's not, that's not quite what it is, at least when it comes to what's called general trust, which is the baseline expectation of others' goodwill or benign intent, which can be contrasted with assurance, which is expectations of benign behavior for reasons other than goodwill. Uh, Yamagishi's influential theory of trust poses that higher informal monitoring and sanctioning in more collectivist societies creates the assurance or expectation that in-group members will do right, but if you go outside your group and interact with strangers, that sanctioning system's gone, so general trust is low, and indeed uh, research generally links both poverty and collectivist values to lower levels of general trust and misanthropy. One really interesting case that a previous talk reminded me of is the really interesting changes we've seen in general trust in particular in China as uh, levels of um, wealth and modernization have increased recently. So uh, this is a psychosocial challenge in itself because general trust is an important resource because of how often we have to interact with strangers in contemporary life. Low general trust makes interactions with strangers more stressful and also less likely to be beneficial. Trust is the fundamental psychological resource that supports cooperation. So it's a force multiplier uh, for expanding resources and opportunities. People who have higher baseline tendencies to trust others tend to acquire the most resources. We know this going back to Axelrod, including the resource of new and advantageous relationships. Lower levels of general trust can inhibit forming bonds outside of group boundaries. Uh, if you distrust outgroup members, you may avoid interacting with them or depending on them. So you don't get the chance to learn that people outside your group can be trustworthy social partners. Um, and this makes low trust itself a psychosocial challenge that should be considered and addressed. Um, this is especially true given that trust is not important just for self-benefiting cooperation, but for other virtues we're focusing on like caritas and altruism and generosity. Faith in others also promotes these forms of prosociality, and we do generally find more prosociality uh, as we see increasing levels of objective and subjective well being. Um, you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought wealth is what inhibits prosociality. I don't I remember a bunch of studies showing that it's wealthier people who are more selfish and less ethical and lower in empathy? Uh, this was a line of research most famously done by Paul Piff, who um, about 12 years ago published several findings that greater subjective and objective status and wealth lead to less empathy, less pro-social behavior, et cetera. And there was a really uh, very press-friendly study about how people driving luxury cars are more likely to blow through stop signs was one example. Uh, these findings suggest a potentially serious Faustian bargain that if people are more selfish when they're wealthier, will lifting people out of poverty uh, yield less empathy and prosociality? Um, almost certainly not. In fact, the opposite is likely true. Um, there have been quite a few efforts to replicate PIS findings that have pretty consistently failed and lots of concerns raised about his methods, uh, which makes sense because his findings always conflicted with the majority of findings across different disciplines using various methods and much larger, more representative samples. Um, researchers, including me, have consistently found a pretty linear positive relationship between empathy and generosity and ethical decisions and both subjective and objective well-being, which need to be distinguished from greed and traits like humility and narcissism, which are not the same, of course, as objective and subjective well-being. Um, so you do tend to see less prosociality as both objective and subjective well-being decline. 
Um, but I and others um, who publish data on these findings know they're not always super welcome, which I understand. Um, my intuition is that this is because, uh, in my experience, people who study and focus on poverty are some of the most compassionate people in the world. Um, and I think there might be a reflexive worry that if we find that people experiencing poverty are not more virtuous, it might be harder to convince people to help them. Um, but the mission of helping people who are suffering shouldn't depend on their virtue. Um, and I really believe this. I co-founded a nonprofit this year dedicated to helping families and individuals who are, have psychopathy, right, who are psychopathic, um, because it's an illness. And these are very hard people to feel compassion for, but that they need help too. And the world will be better if we do help them. Um, and I also believe that we'll be most likely to be successful in our mission of alleviating the psychosocial challenges of poverty if we understand accurately what those challenges are. Thank you.